It's been quite a long while since the last time I talked about a point-and-click adventure game older than 20 or even 10 years. I have been mostly focusing on more recent, newer adventure game releases as of late. But in this video I'm going to rectify that and return back to the 90s. The game that I'll be talking about this time is 1996's The Neverhood, developed by The Neverhood Inc. and published by DreamWorks Interactive. It was also ported to PlayStation in 1998, but only in Japan. As you can no doubt already see, The Neverhood is a very unique looking point and click adventure game, especially for its time, using claymation. I didn't know about this game until one of my most active and long-time viewers, David Page, told me about it, and requested that I play it. The problem was that the game was not, and still isn't, digitally available on Steam, or even GOG at the time of making this video. But he still really wanted to watch me play the game. And when such a devoted fan who lives in Australia goes so far as to buy a physical copy of the game on eBay, and after making sure it worked on modern Windows, send it to me all the way to Finland, how could I possibly say no? It's really thanks to him that I got to make this video. So I would like to thank you again, David Page, for sponsoring both the Let's Play and this My Thoughts On video. So, without further ado, my name is Siperos and these are my thoughts on The Neverhood. After booting up the game and watching this title screen animation play out, you are immediately drawn to the game where we see our protagonist sleeping on the floor. There's no cutscenes or cinematics, no nothing to give us any kind of context or idea who our protagonist is or where we are. It was quite jarring at first. Our protagonist wakes up, and we start exploring the surreal landscape with some seemingly deserted buildings and occasional hints of life here and there. We learn that our protagonist's name is Clayman, and that this world is, unsurprisingly, called Neverhood. There isn't much of a plot going on in the game, at least at first, and you are just exploring the world and solving puzzles to access new areas. As you do that, you find and collect discs that contain the game's disjointed story, narrated by one of the few characters in the game, and our friend, Willy Trombone. Me Willy Trombone. But the discs only tell us the bare minimum that we need to know about the game's story and Neverhood itself. There's much more to its world. The entire lore and background of Neverhood is recorded on the walls in the Hall of Records, which is ridiculously long. Seriously, it took me about three and a half minutes to walk from the start to the end of the corridor. And guess what? I had to walk all the way back. What a troll! There were so many walls full of text that I didn't have the patience to read all of them, but basically, the story mimics the biblical Hebrew story of creation. We learned that the world of Neverhood was created by Hoborg, essentially God, who also used life seeds to create Neverhood's first inhabitants, Clock and Willy, to keep him company. Self-centered and irreverent Clock, the game's antagonist, however, wanted Hoborg's crown, but was scolded by Hoborg saying that the crown was the only thing he couldn't have, so the crown is the story's forbidden fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Clark then stole Hoborg's crown that gave his creator all his powers, and when he tried it on, it twisted and mutated him. With Hoborg being lifeless without the crown, Clark had become the self-proclaimed ruler of Neverhood. And we as Claymen must fix this and save Neverhood. Or doom it, depending on our choice that we must make at the end once we reach the castle and enter the throne room where both Clark and Hoborg are. The good ending is infinitely better and longer than the evil ending. There's only a handful of characters in the entire game and no dialogue, or rather very little of it since you can't talk to other characters even if you wanted to. Clayman himself is a silent protagonist, not saying a word until at the very end of the game. His personality is next to non-existent, although the stop-motion animated cutscenes do give him some character. Clayman is depicted as naive, curious and infantile. But as we progress through the game, he seems to mature as he learns about right and wrong. The other characters are not particularly interesting either, but simple in a surprisingly deep story. But let's talk about the main reason why you picked up this game back in the day. The unique usage of claymation. Stop motion animation using clay. Stop motion animation is not that popular these days due to the amount of work that it requires, and thanks to today's cheaper computer-generated imagery, aka CGI technology. Stop motion is a technique in which objects, like the characters and props, made of clay in this case, are minimally moved, and each movement is then photographed to create a frame of the film, then all the photographs, or frames, are put together to create a seamless motion picture. As you can probably imagine, that's a very time-consuming technique. 
According to Pamela Claybrick Thompson's article on Animation World magazine's December 1997 issue 2.9, the Neverhood team put in many hundred hour weeks to deliver the game on time in about a year. So I can only imagine how many thousands of man hours it took to make all the animations for the game. Which is partly why the Neverhood is not a long game, but more about that later. According to developers, about three tons of clay was used to make the game's characters and scenery. And they didn't cut any corners when it came to the Neverhood's claymation quality that is pure eye candy. Not only is it excellently done stop motion animation, but it also has a lot of character. The creative usage of clay allows some wacky, cartoonish humor to flourish, and that's lots of fun to watch. This scene where Clayman runs from this green alien monster that's chasing him reminded me of Looney Tunes and put a smile on my face. Not only is the game fun to watch, but also listen to. The Neverhood's music, composed by Terry Scott Taylor, is perhaps the catchiest that I have ever heard in an adventure game, despite the lyrics being a bunch of incoherent nonsense. But it fits the game's light-hearted tone. My gravy love, potato love, my gravy love, tomatoes and potatoes and my peas. Tomatoes and potatoes and my peas. <laughs> Maybe that's why I have found myself humming these songs occasionally ever since. I said earlier how the Neverhood is not a long game when I look back to it, but it sure does its best to make you invest more time to it to get your money's worth in your typical 90s adventure game fashion. The first way the game does this is by having some very obscure puzzles with abstract clues. Most puzzles in the Neverhood are about logic, sound or environment manipulation, and only a couple are item based. You don't even have your own inventory, so you just have to remember what you have picked up. Which isn't hard considering how few items there are in the game, most of them being those story discs. And when you do get an item, like a matchstick, you usually know immediately where to use it. All you have to do is click on the right thing and claim and will use the item automatically. But some of the puzzles in the Neverhood are real head scratchers. There is at least one puzzle that is very close to moon logic territory. In this sound-based puzzle we must turn on this radio and use it to open the door on the right. How do we do that? First we must use this groove car to get all the way up to the radio on a wall. We then hear a cowbell ringing. Where have we heard that sound before? Back in our house from the beginning of the game in the flytrap room. We pull the right cord hanging from the ceiling. We then go all the way back to the previously non-functioning radio that should be working now and turn the dial till the right song from the wall radio is playing and the door leading to the next room is open. But the one behind you is now closed instead. And yes, you need to mess around with this radio again when you need to go back. This puzzle was so obscure that I don't think I could have ever figured this one out on my own. I only managed to solve it thanks to the tips I got from my viewers. While the Neverhood has some very simple and easily understood puzzles as well, some of them are still a pain in the ass to solve. Like this one here which you'll know immediately is a simple memory game at first glance, but it's super tedious. You must solve this puzzle in one perfect go memorizing all the symbols scattered in these 48 tiles. You must match up every identical symbol in a row before moving on to the next group of symbols and repeat this process until every tile in this board have been checked. And the number of identical symbols can vary from anywhere between 2, 4, 6 and 8. What makes this puzzle tedious is the fact that if you mess up only one pair of symbols, you have to start all over again. During my playthrough I was like, screw this, I went to look for the solution for this puzzle online, like a screenshot of the entire board with all the symbols uncovered or something. But guess what? Some puzzle solutions in this game are randomized. And this is one of them. So to beat this memory game you must either 1. Have superhuman memory. Or 2. Do what I did and map out this entire board to a notebook or piece of paper. Check every tile and draw the symbols to the right places and just follow that map to solve this puzzle. Another puzzle whose solution is randomized is this one. 
You need to input the right symbols in the right order. Yes, and this game has a thing for weird symbols. But how do we know what the solution is? Well, way earlier you must have noticed this black screen with a button on a wall. Whenever you pressed it, the screen gave you various symbols. The same ones that you see and need here. So you must go all the way back to press the button multiple times and draw the symbols somewhere, so you know which ones to use and in what order to open this door. By now you may have noticed the second way this game makes you spend more time on it, by making you backtrack a lot. What makes this so time consuming is the fact that there isn't fast traveling. Well, not always. You can click to teleport forward when you are in first person mode like this outside. But once you are in third person, which is most of the time, you can't fast travel and must watch as Clayman slowly walks to his destination. That was why it took me what felt like a short eternity to walk from one end of the hall of records to the other and back. So get used to watching Clayman's walking animation. And things like messing around with the radio I previously mentioned to reopen doors and racing all over in the bridge also slow you down. But despite all of this, The Neverhood is not a long game and you can beat it in about 15 to 20 hours, maybe even around 10 hours if you are an experienced adventurer and don't get stuck for too long like I did occasionally. The Neverhood is a fun, charming, unique, puzzle-focused and yet surprisingly deep point-and-click adventure game that stuck out from the rest back in 1996 and still does today. Like I said earlier, stop-motion animation or claymation is not a popular technique these days due to the amount of work and time it requires, and I would imagine it's more expensive too compared to CGI. But over the years since the Neverhood, we have received at least a few point-and-click adventure games using stop-motion animation. Like the Dream Machine, whose first chapter was released in 2012, and the conclusive sixth chapter in 2017. The upcoming gorgeous-looking Harold Halipot that I have had my eyes on for a while now, and Kickstarter-funded Army Croc from 2015 that is the closest thing to the Neverhood sequel, but is more like a spiritual successor, developed by the creators of the Neverhood. But from what little I have seen in terms of reviews, Army Croc is not as great as the Neverhood, although the stop-motion animation looks very good. The Neverhood shortcomings, the occasional obscure puzzle and tedious backtracking are overshadowed by the excellently and lovingly crafted claymation, the charm, sense of humor and deep story. If you happen to get your hands on a physical copy for a reasonable price, I say definitely give it a go. Scum VM currently supports the Neverhood, so it should be relatively easy to make the game work on today's modern systems. Because adventure games using stop-motion animation or claymation like this are very rare, I think we should cherish and appreciate those few that we have. And there you go folks. Those were my thoughts on The Neverhood. I would like to thank David Page one last time for gifting me the game and thus sponsoring this video. What are your thoughts on the game? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.